Welcome to the Drama Queen Perspective, a podcast designed to empower, inspire, educate, and entertain. Drama Queen is a philanthropist, educator, business owner, poet, and performer. So you know you will be entertained. Find out what's trending. Get a thumbs up or thumbs down on the hottest restaurants, places, and things. And find out ways to help your business grow and much, much more. Without further ado, here is your host, Drama Queen. NFL player, presidential lifetime achievement recipient, national motivational speaker, and author. Who am I talking about? Mr. Frank D. Murphy. Before talking about my experience working with Frank D. Murphy, on his stage play that featured his life story. I want to dig a little bit deeper into who Frank D. Murphy is and what attracted me to his organization and being a part of this play. So Frank D. Murphy has an organization called Mentoring with a purpose that right there struck me because I love mentorship and then to have a purpose with it so let's talk about Frank D. Murphy who is the author of Man Behind the Helmet God of Second Chance as well as the writer and director of the educational stage play, The Man Behind the Helmet, the life story of Frank D. Murphy. If that wasn't great enough, he also founded Put Down Your Fake ID conferences and created the Frank D. Murphy Online Life Skills Curriculum Program for youth in grade schools to high schools, to even professionals. Frank is the first professional athlete to produce and write his own educational stage play that has been derived from his book, and he has also created a digital life skills program. The stage play is offered in person and virtually, and this is how I, Shanice, got connected with Frank D. Murphy and his amazing and talented team to work on the stage play. And I want to share my experience working with him. I debated if I wanted to do this video, but I felt that it was very, very important because a lot of times people have preconceived ideas about athletes. At one time in my life, <laughs> I've had preconceived ideas about athletes. And some of them are not necessarily preconceived. It's just based off past experiences. But just as we say you cannot judge all women by one woman's mistake, you can't judge one race by one person's mistake, you got to apply the same thing with athletes. When I became familiar with Frank D. Murphy was in the year 2019. So in 2019, I was in the process of moving to Atlanta, Georgia. And so preparing to move to Atlanta, I joined several Facebook groups and followed several different um, organizations. So when I finally made my move, I would have networking opportunities and possibly have already made connections before making my move to Atlanta. 
And so imagine when I see a notice in one of the Facebook groups that I follow about an audition. And it is for an organization called Mentoring with the Purpose. And Frank D. Murphy presents the man behind the Hellman stage play. So it says, do you have what it takes? Former NFL player Frank D. Murphy is looking for you to be a part of his hit stage play, The Man Behind the Helmet, calling all actors and actresses and thespians alike. I was ecstatic because the auditions were happening a week after I was supposed to move to Atlanta. Now, my move was delayed by about 30 days. I was supposed to move earlier, but that was okay because God saw fit for me to move when I was supposed to move. So I made it a point to submit my information so I could have an audition. And I auditioned for the man behind the helmet stage play. So let's talk about the actual audition first. For those that are in the industry, whether you've ever auditioned for theater, uh, film, commercial, whatever, a lot of times when you are doing live auditions, you can feel the energy of the people that you may potentially be working with. You also get an opportunity, sometimes a first opportunity to look at the material because you don't always get your sides ahead of time. So I didn't get my sides ahead of time. So I got them when I arrived. And the first thing is I love the location um, that the audition was in. The audition felt very professional. Sometimes in this industry, there are people that are trying to sex you up that are not even in the industry but they know that people are so eager to be in the industry that they're setting you up for something negative and a potential crime um so it's just it's about energy it's about the location and it was in a public location and the energy i felt was amazing there were men there there were women there um they were very professional. They were very friendly. When I had an opportunity, I read for a couple different roles. I enjoyed reading the script. They gave me a couple minutes to kind of look over the script and then go ahead and audition with someone. And it just, it felt good. It felt good. And one of the things that I had learned before moving to Atlanta, because I was going to start auditioning a lot more than I was when I was in the Midwest, is... Once you audition for something, let it go. Don't dwell on it. Don't think about it because you're going to get a whole lot more no's than you do yeses. And you can't dwell on those no's. So after the audition, throw the sides away. Don't think about it. Keep it moving. Keep it pushing. And that's what I did. So the audition happened in August of 2019. And we actually started rehearsing in October of 2019. Now, one of the things that I want to say that I was very impressed with is we had to fill out information, you know, about our, ourselves, emergency contact information, food, allergies, um, sensitivities, all of that good stuff. They had me at that point because I was able to let them know that I had celiac disease, which meant that I was allergic to gluten in every single practice they had gluten-free options for me to have during practice, which I was very, very appreciative of, very appreciative. So we practiced and, you know, it depended on how many uh, roles or what, what role you had, how often you practiced. It really was an amazing experience for me because this was one of the first projects that I worked on 
moving to Atlanta and the first group of talented people, you know, not living here and not really knowing a lot of people, everybody just seemed to embrace one another. Some people were from Atlanta. Some people were not. They moved here recently. Um, the young lady came here to specifically work on this play because of the impact that this play has had in the past. So I really, really enjoyed working with the cast. Not only did I enjoy working with Frank and, you know, the writer and the the, the co-director and the producer, I genuinely enjoyed working with the cast and I genuinely enjoyed watching them perfect their craft each and every single practice. It was amazing. It was so amazing. And I felt like God put me in this space for a reason. So the initial goal was for this to be a traveling play. And we were going to start and we were going to do our first performance in March of 2020. Matter of fact, at the end of March 2020. But we all know what happened in March of 2020. So we practiced from October of 2019 to March of 2020 only for the schools to be shut down and everything to be shut down, the world to be shut down due to the pandemic. So some people, that would have made them say, you know what, it's not meant for me to do this project, but not Frank D. Murphy. Had a conversation with Frank because Frank moved here from Florida and I had moved here from Missouri. And so just kind of like to pick his head about, you know, his organization, the move, you know, when you have an opportunity to work around great people, whether it is a paid opportunity or not, take advantage of every opportunity to learn and to pick their brain. After our first table read, I was amazed because I was able to find a little bit of information about Frank D. Murphy online, but I wanted to really let it be organic and learn about him through the play. I wanted to tell him so bad about me being a participant on 60 Days In because I knew I could really relate to a lot of the things that were discussed in the play because I too had been to jail and seen these things. I too have been a mentor and work with youth. And so I wanted to talk to him about it, but I couldn't because again, we started practicing in August of 2019 and the show did not air until January of 2020. And I was not able to share with people until December of 2019. And that opened up the doors for conversations. Now you can see why this was something that I was passionate about. Working with youth has been something that I have always, always been passionate about. My father used to tell me that as a child, I would always try to pick up children and play with them and talk to them. And so as I became older, you know, especially high school, I used that as an opportunity to start mentoring those younger than me. And of course, as an adult, it's something that I thrive off of. So now I have an opportunity to work with a past NFL player that has really was was the at-risk youth that I've worked with for years. It 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 gave me validation 
because it made me think that my words are going to penetrate at least one student that they're going to do something great. And I'm going to have a Frank D. Murphy that I mentored or taught or led or counseled. It just gave me such great joy. Moving to Atlanta, my plan was not to be involved in the theatrical side because that's what I did in the Midwest. I wanted to be a part of the film industry and learn about the film side of it because it's different. And I did that. You know, when I first moved here, I had an opportunity to work on a couple of student films. I had an opportunity to work on a uh, commercial. But my first love still kind of is the stage. I'm theatrical. I have a big personality. And I have an opportunity to combine two things that I love really three things that I love, mentorship, working with at-risk youth, and theater. We were going to schools that had a high population of at-risk youth. But even though that got shut down, as I said earlier, that did not stop Frank D. Murphy. I remember getting a call from Miss Mina. I want to say it was the end of 2020. I'll say that. I don't remember the month. And saying, hey, we want to shoot this as a movie. Even though it's a stage play, we want to shoot it so we can still try to get it into the schools and get the message out there. Are you down? Absolutely yes. You tell me when and where. Now I was a little scared because, you know, COVID. And during this time, I know that I am immune compromised and that I am trying to have surgery. But God told me, I got you, boo. I got you. I did not have you start this process with them for you not to complete it. So if you trust me, just go along with the flow and continue to be a part of this amazing production. And so that's what I did. So we started recording. Now, originally... I want to say I had three or four roles. I don't remember exactly. I had multiple roles. And so we, once we decided to go to the movie aspect, the film aspect of it, and not so much the stage play, you know, there had to be some rewrites that were done and changes made. And so I was asked to play uh, a couple of roles that I wasn't originally playing because the original young lady that was talented as heck. She lived out of town and she couldn't come. You know, it was during the, the pandemic. And of course, she wanted to be with her family. Traveling wasn't safe. And so I agreed to play those roles. So during filming, somebody got a positive COVID test. I was nervous. I was like, see, I shouldn't have did this. I shouldn't have did this. And then I stopped. And I remember what God said. And I said, okay, you know what? Let me just go take a COVID test. Let me make sure I'm safe. And I'm going to just stay prayerful. And, you know, I'm going to continue to be a part of this amazing production. Because I believe in what Frank is trying to do. I am, I have the opportunity to work with some amazing and talented writers, producers, directors, cast, crew. I gotta follow through. This is another opportunity 
for me to reach people and mentor them and make a difference. And one of the things that I always say I want to do is when I leave this earth, I want to leave my legacy. I want people to remember who I am and what I did for my people and my community. When I say my people, my women, my African Americans, my people that suffer from autoimmune diseases, just like me. People that are passionate about helping the underdog, my people. And so I continued. And God was it an amazing experience. Several months later, well, over a year later, we get the call that editing is done and we have the opportunity to come see the film. They had a big, beautiful event for us. And it was an amazing feeling to see everyone's hard work on screen it was amazing and to know the next steps that frank is taking with the stage play with the regal theaters and what he's doing with this as an actual film it just feels good it feels good to be a part of it Working with Frank was amazing. He pushed me to new heights. Now, originally I was like, I don't know how an athlete is going to push me to new heights, but being an athlete and being an actor and is they're both two competitive roles. And you always want to be your best. And that is something that he pulls out of you. When I was practicing for this, I was sick as a dog. I was suffering with the a new autoimmune disease, Graves' disease. My numbers were seven times higher than they should have been, but I was still dedicated and made it to practice and gave my all. Why? Because I believed in what he was doing and I still believe in it you guys make sure you support Frank make sure you you go out to his website I'll have the link purchase his book if you are an organization a school make sure you try to get him out to speak to your students your organization your professionals he is a dynamic motivational speaker and motivator. His story is amazing. His story lets you know that where you start is not necessarily where you finish. One of the things that I love about Frank is his his motto. His motto is believe it, claim it, work it out. Being a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated I am a believer in no excuses. Right now, I'm not on camera because I've had a crazy week. I've had a client's uh, dog. I had was pulled down a flight of steps. I'm bruised very badly. And another client, we were playing and um, I got hit in the eye. I have a busted blood vessel. I... Uh, slam my finger in the door. I have a bruised and bloody finger, but there's no excuses. I still do what I need to do. Just find an alternate way to do it. And you always have to believe in yourself. And Frank, Frank has helped mentor over a hundred thousand youth Fortune 500 companies and professional athletes. I am a believer in you meet everyone for a reason. 
And I can tell y'all, working with him has been amazing. And I really want to say thank you. Because working with him and working with a, a few other creatives gave me the confidence to know that I too, I didn't move to Atlanta just to be an actress. That I too can start back directing. I've directed before. I too can write my own content. I too can produce my own content. I too can become a mentor while doing this. And I too can start my production company. Classy Creations Production Company. I don't think I would be where I'm at now had I not had the experience working with Frank D. Murphy, his amazing team, and the amazing cast. Thank you so much. And I look forward to the possibility of working with you again in the future. Drama Queen is out. Thanks for listening to the Drama Queen Perspective. Be sure to like and subscribe this podcast and share with the drama queens in your life. Until next time, this has been the Drama Queen Perspective.